In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of my favorite Fourth of Julys was the year that Phyllis and I went to Philadelphia. We did all of the typical tourist things you do on the Fourth of July in Philadelphia. We saw the fireworks, the Liberty Bell, Constitution Hall, and Benjamin Franklin's grave in the cemetery of Christ Church in Philadelphia. That Sunday, we went to Christ Church in New Brunswick, New Jersey, where a friend of ours was the rector. Christians have been worshiping, worshiping in that parish since before there was an Episcopal Church or even a United States of America. Christ Church, New Brunswick, was built in 1742. The third public reading of the Declaration of Independence took place right at the foot of the bell tower that is still there. The first meeting was held at Christ Church to organize the Episcopal Church in the new United States of America. And Samuel Seabury was the rector before he was ordained the first American bishop in the Episcopal Church. This parish is truly historic. All around the churchyard are headstones of graves dating back to the Revolutionary War. Inside are many of the original furnishings of that church. You can't help but feel both patriotic and spiritual at Christ Church, New Brunswick. And looking around, it was easy to imagine Anglicans in the 1700s kneeling for prayer singing, and celebrating the Holy Eucharist. I would imagine there were many times when the people of that parish church gathered during the Revolutionary War to pray. Don't you know they wondered if they could win the war for independence against the mighty British Empire? And I'm sure that their prayers quite often were for strength and guidance and protection of God. Now, this morning's lesson from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians is also about the church praying. The problem is, this time, the situation was different. The Christians in Corinth were feeling too confident. In fact, there was a good deal of boasting going on, boasting about who was the most religious, who prayed the most, Who knew the most about Scripture and who was the most spiritual? It was that classic battle between some of the Corinthians over who was the holiest. And Paul had written to say, stop it. Now what on earth would they have to boast about? Paul tells the Corinthians that it's not about strength, but about weakness. It is in our weakness that God truly works. And Paul reminds those Christians at Corinth that God says, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. Now, I hear that and it's tempting for me to think, Well, if that's true, then I ought to be perfect. My faith certainly feels weak most of the time. So why doesn't God give me more faith than stronger faith? The Christian life can be frustrating at times. I pray and study scripture. And then I pray some more, but it feels like my prayers sometimes are going no further than the ceiling above me. It seems like we try hard enough. So when do we get some of this spiritual power the Apostle Paul is talking about? When does God start working? And Paul tells the Christians in Corinth, we are supposed to pray, and we do need to study Scripture. But that is not the most important part. We also need to quit trying to live the Christian life by our own rules. Certainly, I've never heard anyone around here boasting about how holy they are how much they pray or read Scripture. But our problem is often still one that hinders the work of God. Remember that religious phrase from several years ago, 
let go and let God. Too often we don't want to let go. We don't want things to stay this way they are. We don't want to change, or it's okay for there to be change, so long as I don't have to change. We stubbornly hold on to ideas and opinions, refusing to change because everyone else should be the ones who change, not us. And Paul says that's exactly what we need to do. It is in our weakness that grace begins to work in us. And the thing is, God does work. We've all seen it. Think of it like a tree in the wind. A couple of weeks ago, one of those really big afternoon thunderstorms came through Birmingham. James Spann told us that the winds reached 70 miles an hour. When it was all done, I drove down to the Abbey for a meeting, and there were big trees and big limbs everywhere. I had to take an alternate route because a very large tree was blocking the road. And then it hit me. Only big trees fall, and it's because they do not bend. They don't change. They aren't flexible. Smaller trees and limbs move and flow with the wind. They change with the weather, and when it's calm, they stand upright straight. They grow stronger, and I will bet they last longer. The same is true for us Christians. God leads, and we move in the direction of the Holy Spirit. Change happens naturally because we hear the words of God in our hearts and we give way to the love of God. We share that love with people everywhere and often in times, often in ways that can surprise us. We grow stronger in the Christian life and in our faith. Our weakness is all about strength, God's strength. God's power and allowing the Holy Spirit to work within us. And this kind of thing moves us into new ministry where we can share and spread the love of God that we have found here at St. Matthias. So have faith in the strength of God and we can change our world. And we will see heavenly fireworks here at St. Matthias like never before. Amen.